thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Welcome back to another hot day, steaming hot, dying day in North Carolina where it feels like it's 150 degrees down here. So we got in a little bit of work on our Cummins diesel this morning, our white one that we bought uh, in a previous video. Uh, got some of the suspension loaded in, waiting for some stuff that I ordered, but I figured I would uh, go ahead and catch y'all up today and I wanna show you some interesting stuff. So on this thing so far, what I have done this morning is I have put a brand new ball joint in here in the bottom uh the lower control arm does not appear to be bent in any way shape or form uh something made contact right here i'm pretty sure it is the rotor um or not rotor like a brake caliper or something like that when the wheels tore off uh but nothing else appears to be bent and the bottom flange down here does not appear to be bent normally you look for paint cracks when you're looking for bent suspension components uh, nine out of ten times if you have a bend it's going to crack the powder coating or the paint uh, whatever you want to consider this stuff um, so there's none of no signs of a bend on here um, so i think we're good uh, the best way if you if you can't see anything then obviously whenever it goes through alignment your alignment shop will tell you if you have a bend or not the top control arm uh, we went to press a ball joint into it and that didn't work i'll show you that here in a second but uh, we ended up putting a brand new uh, whole control arm in the top ball joint in the bottom and uh new uh inner tie rod we're reusing the old outer um because there's nothing wrong with it uh the boot is tore up on this so i had to order a boot and it's actually not called a tie rod boot it's surprisingly called a rack and pinion bellow uh pretty annoying to find i don't know why they can't just call it what it is which is a tie rod boot but uh our sensor appears to be good we're gonna go back and look at that here in a second and then we put a brand new uh brake line on it i've got it shoved in here so that it don't get messed up but now it looks like it's uh you know you shove something in there and then it don't come back out uh but we went ahead and put a brand new brake line we're waiting for our um uh spindle so i've ordered that from a junkyard and waiting for that to come in the mail to be shipped here and then we're waiting for our rim and tire we just found that and ordered that this morning i still have not fixed my wiring so for the first video for this truck uh, i explained why we jumped the wiring to this side of the uh pigtail more than likely we're just going to cut these wires on this side and then make a deutsch connector plug uh for just these wires and retain the factory um, plugs on that that's going to be the best solution since there's only uh four so i let it run for a really long time this morning to make the back sure the batteries stay charged and to make sure this thing was uh awake i guess you could say and uh it runs amazing so we have all of our other parts here uh we broke all this down this morning and started diving into making sure we don't need anything uh so our abs sensor uh is not damaged all of our pins are in there so it literally just ripped it apart so hopefully it did not break anything internally uh, when we put this in, we will know uh, if it doesn't read, then it's bad eternally. But I think it just ripped it apart. That happens a lot. Our brake caliper looks fine. It just damaged the line. Rotors look fine. Spacer looks fine. But the wheel bearing, um, if you can hear that, she does not sound good. A lot of times when we're rebuilding these salvages, uh, they take when they take hard hits to the wheels. A lot of times they mess the wheel bearings up. Not always. Uh, we've rebuilt some hard hits to the wheels and re uh, reused the wheel bearing, but um, that one is bad. So that's where we're at. I've got the fender. I've got the brand new bumper. Headlights are on the way. So I've got everything I pretty much need besides the spindle and the wheel. I've already purchased it. They're just on the way uh, to getting this one up and running. I've already bought myself another truck, possibly. So you'll see it when it comes in. I have bought another Cummins that's loaded, like very high packaged, higher miles, lifted, looks like 37 inch mud tires, four wheel drive, dually. It's a bad truck, but it is hit pretty good and extremely tore apart. So I might not even get to hardly enjoy my new truck before my new truck gets here. My new truck before my new new truck gets here. I uh, think I have a buying problem, but um, Randy may be taking the white one if I keep the new one I just bought. Uh, he may take the white one off of my hand. So we'll see how this plays out because there's no guarantee that the new one I just bought is even good. So I had all this out front earlier. I had me a homeless camp set up working in this heat. But here is our uh, tie rod. The outer is perfectly fine. So it's still stiff. It doesn't have any play in it. 
that's nice and tight so we're going to reuse the uh the outers no reason to throw these parts away we don't replace things that uh don't need to be replaced so we don't just replace things just because um you know a lot of times there's no issues at all with it um the boot even still looks good it looked like cracking there but it's not a lot of these components that i took off was moog i don't know what brand that is but that outer tie rod is perfectly fine now one interesting thing is if i find it where did my other control arm go man i don't know where it went but the ball joint this is your upper ball joint so it literally exploded this thing um you can see the cracks in it so when it pulled the ball out of the socket it ripped the ball out of the socket on the spindle um it literally exploded this ball joint i've never seen one do that so we've seen a lot ripped apart but i've never seen them crack like that so when it did that it actually uh the hole that the ball joint was in it stretched it open a little bit obviously and so when i went to set the new ball joint down in there um it literally just fell right in there and didn't press in there so that's when i knew that the control arm up top was bad the control arm didn't look bent or anything um actually i do have that I forgot it's in the f-150 along with the coyote heads and mustang headers and everything all the other junk it's like i feel like i'm homeless half of the time riding around with all this crap so here's the control arm out of the cummins and it didn't bend it so the control arm's not bent um no signs of powder coat cracking no signs of damage no signs of the bush and everything it just ripped the stud straight out of the ball joint but when it did that it flared this out so i don't know if the camera picks it up but we can slightly see a flare especially right here uh this side right here is humped out this these walls are more straight true to a 90. this wall over here is more blowed out you can also see what i was just talking about okay if you if we look over here there's no cracking and if we look on this side there's cracking right here to the powder coat okay and sometimes that is such as this right here this is not from the wreck this is just normal wear and tear um you know but if you have fresh cracking or cracking in the area of the accident normally it's going to point you towards damage um we have some cracking in the powder coat right here but if you move it with your fingernails and you look underneath it you see how rusty that is so that's going to be old that's not going to be new from the wear and tear but over here if we move this out of the way this cracked powder coat the camera's probably gonna be hard to pick it up uh yeah it's not gonna be right there okay you see how that's a little shiny and it's surface rust it's not deep rust that's because that's fresh and then it also matches all the way across the top there's stress cracking in the powder coat where it blew it out this way so this thing was on the truck like this and it took a hit to the front bumper okay and tore everything out this direction so that means it would have torn on this side look at that flip it it's on the side that it ripped on so when it ripped that suspension apart it went that way that's the reason why this side it's perfectly fine so once you do this for a while uh once you do salvage tiles for a while you start learning to read parts um and you start learning not to just throw stuff away for no freaking reason and it saves you money because there's no way if you go through here just replacing all this stuff you're not going to make money at this, this is obviously not a money making gig for me on the dually side right away i mean i do make money when i sell my personal vehicles i make really good money um but i buy them to keep so it's not like i'm making money right out the gate so we're going to chunk this one back here in our pile of broken parts um if you're doing salvages or you want to do salvage you gotta learn to read the accident and read the parts and look at the part and see what the part is trying to tell you for what is damaged and what's not damaged um, you can do this without special measuring tools and all that stuff and you'll be perfectly fine you just need some experience now on our wheel we ordered a wheel because it took a lick uh, let's see it now I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I think it's right there. Yeah, right there. Took, when it took a hit, it uh, it bent that rim. You can also see right there, that's a gash in the tire. So it hit something definitely right there, busted a the tire, and then went back 
uh, within a split second and bent the rim a little bit. So we'll probably put this as a spare under the truck. This truck don't have a spare. Probably take a sledgehammer and sledgehammer that out and it should hold air. Uh, we'll have to find a tire, but just have as a spare. And then we ordered a, another rim and we ordered a matching tire for this thing. So we always order used tires that are the same exact tread and brand. You can get them off eBay. So that's where we're at on the Cummins for right now. Let me get all this crap cleaned up. Here's the inner tie rod where it just literally ripped it, slam out of it. It didn't blow that one out. It just ripped it out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get this cleaned up. And then the next clip of this video will be when we get some parts in. So we finally got her inside. We got the wheel chunked on her. Now this is the bent rim. My other rim's still on the way and this is a spare tire out of the ditch just to get it rolling. So this is gonna end up the spare tire for the truck. Uh, I think it'll drive fine. It's just the edge of its bent so it might have a slight vibration but it'll be a good spare to be in the truck and have one. But check out this dumb crap that we're doing on the front. So on this thing, the headlight bucket is busted. Uh, so we gotta replace this piece right here. And whatever engineer come in and was smoking crack that day uh, of designing this decided that they were going to put the bolts if you look right here this is the back side this is the nuts so the bolts are up in there they're right there so you got to pull the whole washer reservoir out to even get them from down there and then i don't even know what you'd have to do on that side um but yeah looks like these tops might be busted and then they decided that they wanted to put a rivet over there because all of these bolts weren't enough uh to just go off of the bolts so i'm about to drill the rivet out and slip this thing out and uh, then we have to replace this piece. And the engineer that did this decided he was gonna stick the bolts this way. And that piece right there goes over and hits the intercooler and you can't get the bolts out. So you'd have to take the whole intercooler and radiator and all that loose to get the bolts out. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna try to loosen something up here and see if I can shim something, wiggle something enough to get it out. I doubt that will happen, uh, but we'll probably just end up cutting the bolts and then just putting normal uh, people bolts through it from the hardware store. All right, I was able to unhook the top of the intercooler and the top of the radiator and wiggle it all around and get it to slide between the two, but then getting it back this way is a little harder. So I went ahead and did the next man a favor and turned it around correctly. The engineers got it wrong. That way you can just put your two nuts on this side, use a ratcheting wrench to make your adjustments to your bumper up and down, whatever you need. Uh, and that way it's done um, like an American and not like a freaking retarded engineer. Well, we're driving her. I didn't go like in depth in this video because obviously uh, we weren't covering this project in depth. We were just kind of touching on the major points. So we're gonna pull back up to the shop here in a second and I'm gonna show y'all. Uh, we got all the front end together. Now I still have to paint the little filler pieces under the headlights and I still have to do the wiring, uh, the Deutsch connector, repair the wiring. I've got it just zip tied up right now, just to uh, take it on its first zip, or zip tie, <laughs> first test drive. Uh, also waiting for my other wheel to come in. So this is the gonna be the spare one that's on the truck. And of course it needs to go to alignment, as you can see. Uh, but I'm waiting for the boot to come in, the tie rod boot that I had to order since the new tie rod did not come with one. Um, that should be here today. So hopefully we can get the tie rod boot on it and get this thing over to alignment the next day or so. And I think my new Cummins, uh, or my other Cummins, they're both new to me, old to somebody else. I think it's going to be here today also. So hopefully we can finally get a look at that one and see how bad that one's going to be. The AC is not cooling in this thing right now. It was ice cold yesterday. Uh, the sun wasn't out, I don't think, when it was ice cold. Um, so maybe a little low on Freon. Not 100% sure. We're going to have to look at that. But she's driving. We got an ABS light and a brake light. So uh, we've got to hook the scanner to it and see what that's all about. Uh, let's see here. Besides that, everything has pretty much went smooth, y'all. What is this? How do people drive around like this? <laughs> oh man to each their own i guess all right so let's pull up here and i'm going to show y'all how this thing turned out because it turned out freaking phenomenal so stoked pull back here and not hit anything 
All right, so there's all together. We still gotta do the pinstripe. Like I said, we gotta paint these pieces down here. This is just our spare wheel for right now, but we got the whole front end back together. Gotta clean it up. Still need an antenna, but man, y'all, this thing is freaking amazing. I love it. Uh, haven't touched the bed. I'm not planning to touch the bed. But, you know, uh, this truck may possibly be getting sold if I don't keep my other one, and I'll probably just let it roll as is on this. But man, dude, I am so freaking happy with how this thing turned out. Took a little longer on parts than I originally expected, but overall, uh, pretty easy repair and build.